Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Shells. Uh, operator Starsky here, very nice to see you tonight. Um, and uh, tonight we have a new update from Ukraine. This day was tough because it started around 1 a.m., something like that. Uh, we had a bunch of uh, air alerts today specifically since 1 38 a.m and uh, another one was in the morning around 7 a.m another one was in 11 a.m um and it was crazy uh so the first alert was caused by multiple uh moped drones launched by russians we call them mopeds because this is exactly the sound they make when they fly they sound like a, a lone mower and uh, i'm serious uh and uh, uh basically a bunch of them uh try to target kiev uh something like 12 or 14 i cannot tell you specifically uh were launched against uh Mikolaev. they were all luckily intercepted and uh some two or four were launched uh, in the direction of Kyiv. They were intercepted as well, but uh, one of those drones managed to uh, basically penetrate our defense and uh, fly over Kyiv. It crossed uh, a bunch of districts, including mine, and uh, yeah, luckily it was destroyed. But uh, yeah, we we had some uh, some tough time tonight then in the morning there was a massive strike um there were something like 20 uh, 12 uh, russian uh, tu 160 bombers equipped with uh, uh, cruise missiles they were in the air and uh, they launched those missiles against uh, different different targets all around the territory of ukraine so uh, partially um those missiles were intercepted in particular five of them were intercepted over kiev but uh, a bunch of uh, those missiles unfortunately uh, hit their targets uh, specifically in um, vinnytsia in lutsk uh, in lutsk uh, those missiles hit uh, the uh, power facility it was damaged and uh, that's why uh, something like one million people uh lost electricity instantly which doesn't change much in terms of uh, military situation in ukraine whatsoever uh because the electricity will be restored eventually plus ukraine is plugged into this european uh power grid that's why even Theoret theoretically even uh, having uh, zero power plants in ukraine we will still have light uh, but uh, on the other hand it doesn't change uh, anything in terms of the uh, front lines and uh, aside of making ukrainians even more uh, angry and more united i don't know if there will be any benefit for russians in this regard um so uh, a bunch of news uh mainly related to uh, iranian drones those mopeds um in the uh, united nations security council today uh russians again rejected uh, all the accusations of using those drones uh funny thing that even uh, a couple of days ago on podcast basically it was a stream a live stream of a tv show when a uh, defense counselor of russian federation asked without knowing that uh, the microphone was on he asked the host of this show not to uh, talk much about those Iranian drones and he said uh, quote we all know they are Iranian but uh, our command prefers not to admit it um, and now it's like everywhere on the internet um, also Iran condemned 
the investigation because uh, the United Nations uh, is planning to bring their investigators uh, and uh, examine those drones. We have plenty of them already in Ukraine. Uh, we also have uh, a Mahajer 6 drone that was uh, caught completely intact. Uh, basically, one of Ukrainian soldiers shot its engine and uh, it landed uh, in the sea. So we towed it to the shore um, completely intact. Interesting thing about this drone is that uh, while comparing to same drones, for example, at the military exhibition in Tehran, they have, of course, those Iranian flags uh, all over those drones. But uh, the drones that were brought to Russia, they have, of course, no Iranian flags. Uh, they have uh, titles and different descriptions uh, and uh, placards on those drones uh, written in English with uh, mistakes, with bad grammar. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, another thing is that some of those drones have Russian stickers screaming that those drones were made in Russia, not in Iran. Um, and uh, that they don't usually do that. Like, I haven't seen any T-72 tank uh, like ever in my life with huge Russian title on it saying T-72 because like what was the purpose anyways uh, so Iranians condemned this investigation it reminds me of that uh, somebody mentioned that it's like when the kid says I didn't take the chocolate also, don't check my room. <laughs> uh, it's so funny and uh, yeah. Uh, so those are the main news of today. Uh, luckily, as for uh, the casualties, uh, we have information that uh, three or four men uh, were uh, wounded. Uh, they received uh, burns and stuff like that, but nothing very serious. Uh, and uh, I don't think that we have uh, killed as a result of uh, this massive strike uh, because uh, people were in the shelters and uh, they took this very, very responsibly, in my opinion. We, uh, we, we seem to have just been joined by Nick, so that means Dave's about to leave. So uh, we we uh, we got a, a super chat in from um, Jean Marc Paganel, but there's going to be a correction in what it says. So I'm just waiting for him to get back to me, and then we'll get a couple of super chats in. Um, there's it's it uh, it's been a day. It's been a couple of days of really intense news. Um, it, there must be some serious emotional turmoil going on for people that are, you know, trying to live normal lives that are anywhere near the fighting right now, Starsky. It must be really, really, really tough. It kind of is. Uh, it's kind of tougher for militaries, I would say, because, uh, again, nothing new for Ukrainians. Uh, we were hit by Russian missiles earlier in fe in february march you know april so um this happens all the time uh it's harder for uh military personnel i would say because military personnel often has to be uh, on high alert we have to make sure that uh, you know civilians are safe uh we have to make sure that uh during those alarms uh, alerts, missile alerts, uh, people don't gather in big groups in malls and stuff like that because it's very dangerous. Uh, so they should all be safe and secure. Mm. Well, okay, yeah. So uh, we've got this super chat sorted here. So Jean-Marc Paganel super chatted out, will Starsky go to the hill in case of emergency? Go to the hill. 
Yeah, I'm I'm not 100%. So we'll get a clarification there to make sure we can get it in. And uh, Jean-Marc threw five bucks in the hat on that super chat. So big thank you. Big thank you. Um, you, we mean, got a couple you mean like you mean like Shikovica? Probably. So we uh, have this. I Let me explain this. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one girl made this publication she, she was like famous here in uh, local celebrity here in ukraine she made this publication saying that in case there is a nuclear strike uh in ukraine uh, she will go to this uh mountain or hill in kiev called shekavitsa and have an orgy and uh, a lot of people supported her and it's now a big meme here in, in ukraine about the orgy on a chic of it yeah yeah that's exactly. yeah there we go yeah uh, so it's a big <laughs> uh, a big joke here a very popular joke among ukrainians i, I, will, be there with, I, I will be there with the video camera because like you, you don't <laughs> uh you you don't usually uh record an orgy and a nuclear strike at the same time <laughs> The ultimate you have B to movie. Prioritize. <laughs> yeah. Like. Okay, and then uh, let me see here. We've got a couple more super chats in as well. There was level seventy for six dollars ninety nine cents Canadian. Big shout! Thank you, there, level seventy. Hi, Starsky. It seems Iran will be sending Russia some of their short range ballistic missiles. Does Ukraine have anything to counter these? We are expecting those from uh, our allies, from Europe, from the U.S., um, unless uh, some idiots out there will start saying that we shouldn't send weapons to Ukraine because Russian soldiers die. And, uh, and then we won't receive anything and basically die. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so big thanks there, level. Uh, who, uh, sorry, I uh, got all confused here. That was level 70, okay? And uh, uh, ZOMG1103, is there a way to pronounce that that I don't understand because I'm just a sad old man? I'm not sure. But uh, threw five bucks into the hat. Big thank you, big thank you. Uh, good to see you, Starsky. Wanted to thank you for the captured drone disassembly on your channel. Shocked how many off-the-shelf parts were in it. I was too. Yeah, it's uh, it's an old video. Um, we since then we found a lot of those. Um, what uh, was the most interesting about this drone, in my opinion, was basically it had its body, the the airfoil and the airframe this composite airframe and uh, the parachute and probably this 3d printed mount for the photo camera those were the only russian made parts in this drone everything else was either stolen snatched or bought on aliexpress including engines because of course a uh, big powerful russia is too freaking proud to produce small engines for the airplanes <laughs> um i'm just checking with claire here did uh you see in the the back room there there's the donation shout do you want to take that one uh yep sure so this is from um Oh, I can't see who it actually says, though, Dick. What does that say? Oh, uh, Raven7. Okay, from Raven7, donated 1542. Hi, Shills. Starsky, I'm sorry Ukraine is suffering these attacks. However, re Ukraine will still be victorious. On a positive, not what was really cool to blast White Cross on Spotify this week. Slava Ukrainian. So. Oh, yeah, my man. God. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Because... Um, I published this song and I mm -hmm. wasn't even sure if it's going to be accepted and they rejected it because probably they didn't like with the lyrics or something. Mm -hmm. So uh, I added the lyrics just the way they are with like English and Ukrainian lyrics probably 
I know. Uh, so they accepted it and now it's on Spotify. They even offered me to uh, claim the artist's page. Uh, nobody called me like that before. So it makes me proud. <laughs> wow. That's cool, cool. man. That yeah. is very cool. Yes, that's very cool. Awesome. I like it. And thank uh, you, Raven well, 7. <laughs> Yes, very much, very much. And we just had another one in from Jean-Marc Paganel. Thank you very much again. Threw another five into the hat. Much appreciated. Please play Starsky Lattice Short. Hilarious. You know what? I can cue that up in the background for a little later here. I got you covered. Yeah, I want to vote second on that. That's a good one. It's very good. So I wanted to make this uh, song um, a bit uh, sim because I was inspired by... Uh, always look at the bright side of life. It's my favorite song ever. And I wanted to, you know, to make it uh, like more, not as straightforward as in in the in the skit. Unfortunately, I lacked uh, musical talent for that. But I hope you liked it. I, I don't have it. Um, I got to find it. Uh, what's the actual title of it? What? Let me find it for you. I will drop it into the chat in yeah, okay. just a second. Cool. Yeah, it's definitely worth a play. I can't argue that. Uh, yeah, it's dead easy to find. Starsky, Starsky's track. It's, yeah, it's yeah. called I'm Sorry But. <laughs> uh, th there it is in oh. the chat. Okay. Okay, swing over here. There we go. Okay, and I hate all that autoplay and stuff. And you know, I can't seem to put it backwards, so I'll just get a window capture quick and then I'll uh, you know refresh the page. So hold on a second here. Sorry, but I have to uh do this on the fly. Wasn't quite ready today, was barely, barely. You know, just get it together day. Uh, I, I even right. got like a green screen because I know you guys like I had a green. I, I was late because I was installing the thing. I come in. Nobody's using it. Just fine. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Change it up on me. <laughs> you, uh, hold up. You, Is that you don't live in an 18th century antique Store. I was going to say, what an awesome what? office, but that's your green screen. Yeah, yeah, but Dick was like, you know, he liked the green screen and it was just the faces and, you know, you know okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I know, I totally screwed that up. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Mm -hmm. um, let me make sure I got audio for everybody. I almost forgot to do that. And then mm -hmm. I'll refresh this and we can have a little enjoyment with this video here. Okay, is it going to work? Let's see. I don't hear anything. Oh, it's muted up there. Good morning. Good morning. I have some awful news. Oh, Господи, don't tell me that it's true. Your only son, Fadi, got toasted in Ukraine. But I still have some better news for you. It's Lada. Yes, Lada. Pick red or white or blue. The glorious machine of our nation. We cover all the cost. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry, but congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well done, it's, man. Well done. Again, it's my tragedy because the song plays in my head every time I see Lada on the street, and we have a lot of those. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Yeah, you have just given yourself the ultimate earworm you'll probably never get rid of now, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. But, but I'm glad that I'm not the, the only one who suffers because a lot of my friends uh, text me and curse me for that. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Oh, okay, we got a super chat shout out. Level 70, uh, 699 into the hat. Thank you, level 70. Uh, hi, Starsky. The offense since to, into Lewishenk um, seems to have slowed down. Is this because of increased Russian resistance or is Ukraine pausing? 
I wouldn't say it slowed down uh, because at this point uh, we are eliminating uh, a BTG a day uh, or something like that. Uh, today, uh, 320 Russian soldiers were eliminated. Yesterday, uh, something like 300. Uh, day before yesterday, more than 500 soldiers. So uh, every day we're eliminating a lot of them. You can see that the, the statistic of improved Russians in Ukraine is growing very, very fast which is absolutely great uh so yeah today i saw a video of louis ck one of my favorite uh, comedians and uh, he was furious he was like take a look at those young ukrainian people who celebrate deaths of russian soldiers i cool. would love to take uh Louis to Bucha and show him why exactly we celebrate every time Russian invaders die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we, we've got one here from Barbacoa666. Barbacoa? I think I got that right. Uh, 10 bucks into the hat. Big thanks. Awesome. Thank you very much. Just sending thanks. Well, let's get that up on the screen and give a big thanks right back to you. Awesome. Thanks. And uh, we have one more here somewhere, if I can figure it out. Yes, it's Zoh My God 1103 or Z-O-M-G. I, 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 there's got to be something there. I just can't figure it out. Um, 10 bucks into the hat. So huge. Thanks. Uh, you once mentioned that reporting Russian bots on YouTube can sometimes backfire. Can you clarify on that? Um, yes, yes, I can, uh, uh, I can explain. So, uh, YouTube, in case this person did not violate the community policy of YouTube and, uh, you, YouTube algorithm or YouTube moderator finds that, uh, this person does not violate it. Uh, basically it's when they spread random Russian propagandist bullshit and uh, but at the same time uh, there is no hate speech there's no promotion of terrorism nothing like that you know and then you report to this person so after a while uh, you can receive penalty for false reporting people so it can backfire of course that's why um, you you got you got to consider con consider this Wow, that would really suck. Get yourself in trouble for trying to clean up the platform that you want to be on. <laughs> that was not good. Not good. Um, well, on the other hand, on the other hmm. hand, uh, I don't have anything against that. Uh, sometimes, of, of course, I block people who say complete bullshit uh, on my channel, for example. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, when people... Uh, visit my channel and leave a lot of commentaries under my videos and i'm talking specifically about russian bots or pro-russian bots uh or those uh, rapist supporters um so when they uh, leave commentaries to my videos it increases the uh, reach and uh, uh engagement with the audience which uh, makes those videos more popular and people see them more often in the related videos, uh, which means that basically they help to, you know, promote my videos for free, which is cool. Yeah. Um, it's all about interaction and getting the algorithm to pick up on it and whatnot. So, you know, absolutely. Um, let's see here. We, uh, uh, Golden Skeptic says only paying customers will have their question answered. What a shill channel. Absolutely not. Um, I could show you that in the background right now, a few people on the shills team are collecting questions that are being asked by the viewers, and we are about to turn it over to viewer questions. A uh, couple more minutes of patience, maybe, but, you know. That's it. You know, everybody does what they want to do. But uh, speaking of questions, Dave, um, I bet we've got some good ones. So why don't we get to a few? See where we're at. Absolutely. Space Wolf has not paid for this message. Uh, Operator Starsky, can you fill us in more on the operational status of the Goats of Kiev? 
whatever that, whatever that is. I saw that they recently mobilized in support of the war efforts, Slava Ukraini. Yes, of course, because a lot of volunteers, regardless of their uh, sex, race, uh, ethnicity, religious views, and uh, especially uh, the kind of being, right, whether it's human or an animal, they mobilized and they uh, bring their support to Ukrainian people in Kyiv, for example. It, it, it was like, you know, um, I was scrolling through uh, our channels on Telegram uh, because we have a channel uh, that uh, lets us specifically uh, track missiles while they're flying almost in the real time. Um, and uh, uh, the, the guys were sharing different stuff there and uh, in the end after that attack uh there was a message saying something like well now everything looks back to normal in kiev and then the, uh, there was this video with those goats crossing the road just another day in kiev <laughs> not <Nothing special. laughs> uh, <laughs> awesome goats yeah yeah <laughs> uh what else we got there dave Welcome, Commander, by the way. Um, we, well, I wanted to throw out one of my own because um, in, in your little introduction, there was um, some, some good information on the Iranian, uh, as you put it, moped drones. And I think I'm getting some pretty good information at the minute. So just try and confirm this for me. The drones in question are, relatively speaking, quite cheap and quite numerous as a result. Um, there's something like twenty thousand US dollar, whereas the next step up is something like three hundred grand. Um, as far as I'm aware, they they fire them off in clusters of five or something like that, and then uh, they they end up getting intercepted. I don't actually know the logistics of intercepting a drone because that's that sounds quite difficult. Uh, yeah, so uh, usually they are fired at swarms, uh, in swarms, uh, sometimes in, in pairs. Uh, sometimes there's two drones, sometimes four, sometimes six. Uh, but uh, yes, we're using different uh, measures to in intercept them. Uh, this could include anti-air systems like OSA. Uh, that's a uh, Soviet-made anti-air system, but it it's like very effective and of course we always have our uh air force uh scrambling in the air and uh they do their job as well um air force are better at intercepting cruise missiles though um the drones uh if we're talking about those mopeds uh so they are not really fast uh, they travel at the speed of something like 150 knots, maybe 170, or is it 170 kilometers per hour? Something like that. Not not really fast, uh, but uh, they can they can change their trajectory, and uh, the original drones that were delivered from Iran. Uh, they have their uh, internal inertial system of guidance. Those drones that are currently being used by Russians uh, equipped with Russian GLONASS system and uh, it's uh, analog of GPS basically and uh, that's why it makes them more precise and um, I would say more, more deadly. Russian cruise missiles are not that precise. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, those uh, X-101, for example, missiles, they were specifically created to carry uh, nuclear warheads. And nuclear warheads don't require a big precision, you know, uh, so it doesn't matter if it strikes directly into a target or like one kilometer away. Uh, so that's why they're not very precise, and that's the reason why they strike uh, civilian objects a lot, unfortunately. The drones are more precise, they're more cheap uh, to produce, uh, and uh, yeah, and, and it's like, it, it's a 
cheap, sophisticated weapon, basically. Uh, Russians use those uh, to supplant their missiles, basically. Um, and uh, they are successful in, in supplanting their cruise missiles, but they are not very successful in reaching any military goal uh, whatsoever. I don't know. Some soldiers uh, will sleep a bit less. Some uh, some ki some kids won't be able to play Roblox because they will have no electricity, and this doesn't change pretty much everything. Anything because uh, Russians are uh, losing a lot of their tr their troops uh, on the front lines. They are evacuating their personnel from Kherson at this point. We had information that uh, they started to um, reduce the level of water in the Kakhovsky water reservoir, which is next to that uh, Kakhovsky dam that they want to, uh, that, that they planted mines at. Uh, so they are obviously preparing to retreat and uh, destroy uh, the dam and give up Kherson to Ukrainian troops. They already prepared their audience on the TV to do that. Uh, I saw this Skabeva screaming about it uh, just like yesterday uh, in her TV show and stuff like that. Uh, so the, the only thing the the only reason why they are using those drones and those missile attacks on Ukraine is to show Russians that uh, Ukrainians are also suffering. It's important, uh, and Russians celebrate it very much uh, in their media and Telegram channels. They are happy when they see those uh, missiles striking residential buildings, they dance, they scream, they are so happy to see Ukrainian people suffering. There was a, a follow-up question, if I may, Dick, um, from just Neela. It was actually the first question we got in. Uh, would, uh, rather, I would like to know how likely it is that Russia will try to blow up that dam and what Ukraine can do to prevent this from happening? Which follows up. Uh, currently, what we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to raise aware awareness, uh, and uh, we're trying to um, talk about it as much as we can because uh, Russians uh, will try to blame Ukraine on that, uh, and they already announced that Ukraine is preparing to destroy this dam. Of course, because it's Ukrainian, and Ukrainians are known for being. Uh, into uh, suicide and uh, self-bombing and self-raping and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, that's why we're trying to talk about it, because uh, if this happens, if this dam is destroyed, there will be consequences for all the uh, Black Sea uh, Equatorium. Uh, all the countries that surround Black Sea, like uh, uh, Bulgaria, Turkey, Georgia. So, uh, yeah, go for it there, Dave. Absolutely. My earpiece cut out for a second then and everything went silent. I was like, wait, what's, what's going on? But yes, thank you. Um, so in that case, obviously, um, that would affect as you to um, sort of uh, dampen the fires, as it were, um, wouldn't have much of an, uh, an effect on the electricity. So in the, in the long term, thinking more strategically about these sorts of scenarios happening in any developed um, country. How important is it that said developed countries such as Ukraine are 100% independent when it comes to their utilities, their electricity, their water, etc.? Given that you also um, mentioned that the, uh, that the Ukrainians are hooked up to the European power supply, but don't necessarily need to be dependent on it? Uh, they don't. I think that uh, countries, uh, developed countries, they must have this opportunity to provide themselves with uh, electricity, obviously, but at the same point, uh, if we are talking about the uh, global security, international security, we must be prepared to help other countries 
uh, with uh, our uh, resources and electricity as well. For example, uh, last month, I think, uh, even despite the fact that there's a war in Ukraine, but uh, our president ordered to deliver 100,000 tons of uh, coal to our Polish brothers uh because uh, we care about our allies uh, of course and uh, i think it, we have to cooperate as as one basically uh if you want to survive yeah we've got a we've got a couple of shout outs in so let's turn over to claire and uh make sure everybody gets their big moment <laughs> uh yes first one we have is from uh, gloria raquel donated uh 1364 she says slava to the goats and one sheep in kiev okay. thank you very much awesome <laughs> and from julie moi we have um from uh we have the crones russian sh uh, 100 russian ships have passed over 140 over Norwegian gas pipelines to Europa. Seven Russian tourists have been arrested for flying drones over gas installations. Why sabotage? Could the Article 5 be used? I think that's a question for Starsky, I'm sure. Yes. Um, or Nick. Probably yes, uh, because uh, it's uh, again it is a terrorism. But um, oh my god, I wanted to say something wise, uh, <laughs> but I'm old. My memory is so bad. Uh, for example, uh, today we saw that another missile that was launched from uh, Black Sea flew over the territory of Moldova. Uh, I'm not sure if they will confirm that, but uh, on our maps, it uh, we clearly saw that it was crossing the territory of Moldova, and it's not the first case already. Um, in the beginning of this war, there was a case when um, a UAV crashed in uh, Croatia, not far from Zagreb, I think. And uh, from its remains, because with with at the beginning we thought that uh, probably some kind of Russian cruise missiles just flew to you know to Croatia. From what we uh, identified from those wrecks uh, was that it was a Russian uh, Tu-144, I I believe, uh, jet UAV, um, mm. and uh, it uh, crashed. Uh, in the area that is called the same way as another area in Ukraine, uh, in the Western Ukraine. Uh, so it crashed there. And uh, from, from what I remember, its range is something like 1,000 kilometers, and it was exactly 1,000 kilometers from uh, that uh, launch site in Belarus that it took off from. Uh, so uh, obviously they used uh, like the, the, the probably GPS or GLONASS, or that Russian GLONASS, uh, and confused the areas. So instead of going to Ukraine, it went to the same area only in you know in Croatia. I don't remember how they uh, commented on this. I mean, Croatian authorities, uh, but uh, I, we got to check actually that information. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, again, it's, uh, it clearly shows that uh, you cannot tolerate uh, monkey playing with a grenade in your neighborhood because <laughs> somebody is going to gonna get hurt. Okay. Just to, just, just to clarify on Article 5, because it's important, uh, uh, no, a violation of a, a sovereign airspace does not uh, uh, constitute a violation or, or will not trigger Article 5. Article 5 can only be triggered by an armed attack on a uh, member of NATO. So if it's not an actual armed attack, uh, Article 5 is not triggered. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. And I'm... Mm. I'm going a little out of order, but it's related to Article 5. So from Jean Mark Pagan Owl uh, for $5, if the mistake had hit the RAF and did not miss Article 5 and 6, 
if the miss miss the missile well if the missile had hit the RFA and did not miss Article Five and Six. In other words, if it didn't hit it, I don't know. It's it sounds like the question is if there had been an incidental hit, if if yes. the, if the missile had actually struck a NATO uh, member state. In that case, NATO has a choice, so they can decide to interpret it as an attack if they want to. They probably won't, especially since mm -hmm. in this case, it, it, by nature of the question, it it wouldn't have been. So what's going to end up happening is NATO will recognize the mistake. I've spoken mm -hmm. about this last time too, when uh, mm -hmm. the U.S. dropped uh, five bombs on an embassy in. Uh, a Chinese embassy, mm -hmm. uh, which was an accidental strike. It has to be a deliberate attack for Article 5 to be triggered. Mm -hmm. And if I got that question incorrect, you, Mark Pig, and I'll please add me in the chat and I'll put it on the list. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, our next super chat is from DD Leechogs, 410. What happened to the ghost drone that was supposed to be just what Ukraine needed? NATO has suicide drones as well. What about drone that Poland had that held eight bombs that rotated like a gun barrel? Um, fact is, those drones are, uh, a lot of them are being used. We saw uh, Switchblade 300 being used uh, on the front lines. We saw mm -hmm. a lot of drones carrying uh, mortar shells uh, being used as well. Some of those drones are able to carry six or eight uh, mortar shell shells. They are very, very big. Um, there are smaller drones, uh, but I think those are customized uh, to drop uh, Vogue 17, uh, those smaller grenades. I can say that uh, some of those drones probably um, either not used due to security reasons, because uh, Russians deploy plenty of anti-air uh, systems at this point. If if it was more chaotic uh, early in this invasion, uh, then uh, currently it's different. They improve their tactics, of course. Uh, there's uh, a whole analytic uh, department in their GRU. Uh, the, the, the external intelligence, whatever. Uh, so, uh, where we cannot use them due to uh, anti-air threat, uh, of course, we will, not, we will not risk of using them. On the other hand, uh, sometimes it's better not to uh, manifest that we are using those drones in specific areas, because uh, knowing the range of those drones, uh, it could be, um, it can be easily uh, recognized where those drones are being stationed at. So uh, pro probably that's another reason. I, at, at least I think so. I, mm. that, that's exactly what I would do. Uh, I mean, if I was responsible for this war, I think I wouldn't post as much uh, videos of... Oh my God, I thought Nick had a green screen. But it's like an actual room. That's yeah, no, this is this is my office. Um, that bookcase is uh, almost 250 years old. All the original mm -hmm. glass, all the books are real. The uh, posters. That's a poster of Deadwood, one of my favorite shows up there. Studio mm -hmm. 60, oh, cool. Martin Luther King Jr., yeah. a few other things. So no, that's a that's a real set. Mm -hmm. Holy duck! Right. I thought at first I, when I saw Nick with like green screen behind him, I was like, "Wow!" Like green screen. <laughs> then I see that room, and I was like, "Hmm." I thought all the time that this room was real. Probably it's like a green screen. And then I saw it's Nick a just, fucking yeah, mind just fixing that curtain. Well, the last time I was here, you guys, you guys all had the blue or the green thing added, but I actually had a like yeah. a green screen, so I was going to put it up. And then I was just like, oh, I take all this time. You know what? Actually, this set isn't for my show. I did this just for you guys, and you know, it took me months. I come on, and all of a sudden, Dick's like, "Yo, no, by the way, Nick, do you mind using a green screen?" Fuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, on that Starsky, we have another drone question for you from Zog, eleven oh three four five dollars Starsky. Will we be able to see a dud failed Iranian drone disassembled on your channel? Uh, if it lands somewhere near, then probably yeah. I hope it won't. I, it won't happen, of course, because okay. uh, those. Uh, 
uh, mofos carry uh, something like 40 kilograms of explosives. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, for example, the drone that you saw uh, on my channel, uh, I think that time Kiev was still surrounded by Russian troops. And uh, one of those drones uh, landed uh, in Hostomel, not far from Bucha, basically, mm -hmm. in the field. And uh, we were able to collect that drone, bring it to our base, make uh, this uh, unboxing for you guys. Um, it, oh my God, I, like, it had a, a, a fuel tank made out of plastic bottle <laughs> oh, no okay <laughs> it had a fuel tank made of plastic bottle wow i can see why destructive they're yeah destructive <laughs> children could do better than that come on oh my gosh oh. okay <laughs> and another question for you from the super chats from level 70 uh, for six dollars and ninety nine, Starsky, did the Kazravites finally reach Kiev, or were those just goats? Uh, those were just goats. So were I'm, I'm, I'm glad that uh, they were safe. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm glad that they were safe. They were not abused by Kazravites because we know that mm -hmm. uh, they like um, you know exotic <laughs> experiences. Well I'm, said. Like, Guys, I'm I'm not kidding. Google Kadyrov kissing a donkey. I like right now. What? It's there. Okay, that's I don't, I don't think I'm going to Google that, Stars. I, 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 I appreciate I appreciate that really, but uh, that's not something I want to see. Yeah, no, yeah, that's going to throw us off off track just a little bit. But from Jean Mark Pagan Owl, a member for two months, uh, for ten dollars, he says, "Have Gepard been useful?" Um, I don't know yet, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I don't know yet, but uh, I gotta check it out for you. Okay. And we just, just to, for a little patience, we have two more to finish up and then back to questions. Uh, from Tiny Captain, a member for six months. Uh, no inlet for the next two months. So, last member chat for now. Um, sorry to hear that, Tiny Captain, um, that there's no inlet, but um, happy sales. I'm sure. Right. And from Christina, yeah. Force Guide for $23.99 Lira. Um, how are you doing, Operator Starsky? What are we not understanding that you wished we would? Excellent question. Indeed. Uh, guys, you understand everything well, in my opinion. Um, the problem is... Um, you know those statistics there's usually like 14 percent uh absolutely crazy uh mofos that you wouldn't like even to touch with a, with a stick uh, there are 14 percent of nice guys and the rest is like a mess the in in my opinion it's a bit different uh because i see millions of decent people around the world supporting ukraine but still, there's like 14% uh, or, or something like that, uh, smaller number of people that basically were your inspiration to create the shields. Uh, I'm talking about uh, flat earthers, yeah. uh, anti-vaxxers, and shit like that. Uh, so those people are the problem uh, and not problem at the same time they cause problem because uh they are into all of that uh conspiracy crap that you can find online and the biggest problem is that most of those uh, conspiracy resources um about flat earth about uh i don't know some there's mud mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah right. secret military agreements between yeah. ruling nations, evil empire of America, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's uh, made by Russians, or they support Russians, or they're funded by Russians. Um, yeah, we had uh, this research uh, that showed that uh, a bunch of uh, such websites. Um, are hosted in Russia, actually, like physically, 
there are websites like uh, National Security Archive, uh, which again uh, has it, it contains a lot of like secret documents and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, on, on that site, you can find a page in Russian uh, because they have uh, a lot of uh, affiliates in Russia in different Russian cities. Uh, and basically all those sources, they copy paste Russian propaganda. And that's why people uh, who don't support Ukraine, who oppose this global support of Ukraine, including people who scream that they want peace, they want peaceful negotiations between invaders and people they, uh, <laughs> they're trying to kill. How, uh, how could or, that ever be the case? It's get the fuck out. Yeah. Uh, so the problem is that those people verbally copy paste Russian propaganda. Let's uh, let's check out the most popular Russian narratives. Right. Uh, narrative number one: uh, You shouldn't like uh, international com community shouldn't support. Ukraine, because it only escalates the situation. Putin talks about it. Putin's dogs talk about it because they are hurt because this international support of Ukraine keeps us alive because this international support of Ukraine protects our cities from missile strikes because this international support of Ukraine uh, lets us hold our lines and not uh, let those Russian invaders further further into our territory because when they go further into our territory we have things like Bucha, Izum, Liman, right? Uh, Mariupol and things like that. People don't, they don't uh, want to understand that. Uh, I'm not talking about majority people. I'm talking specifically about those mofos, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, another most popular narrative is uh, that, uh, again, like uh, the like Nazi? Google, mm -hmm. um, Google US Nazi soldiers or Canadian Nazi soldiers, or UK Nazi soldiers, or French Nazi soldiers, you will find some idiots everywhere. There's a lot of nutters out there, right? In any country. Dear the, Lord, the, the, every the, group, every situation, every country, every single grouping of humans, you have to have a percentage mm -hmm. of idiots. There's no way around it. Evolution just dictates that we have to have idiots. I don't know why, it just does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's reality. And the, the interesting thing is that I suspect this, but I think that the percentage of Nazis in every country is approximately the same as like percentage of flat earthers in the society. Uh, so um, they're like everywhere. Like there are assholes everywhere. Okay. Uh, Golden else? Skeptic is proving that right now in our live chat. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, what else? Uh, West bad. West very bad because, uh, like, uh, West uh, does despicable things to other countries. Um, that's like narrative spread by Russians. Okay. Um, there are people in in America, for example, who say the same shit because, uh, like, I don't know, for different reasons. Uh, so some of the craziest commentaries on my channel from an American person was, "What if this guy is a CIA agent?" Guys, tell me honestly, do you? Like, are you afraid of security services in, in your countries? I, like, I, I don't believe that you are afraid of CIA, FBI. I, I'm not afraid of security service of Ukraine for some reason. Probably because they protect my citizens from terrorism. Probably because 
I worked there. I know how it works. Uh, I mean, the security sector of Ukraine, for example. Mm. Probably people who have to hide something from them do <laughs> afraid of them. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, do we so have... We have one more show to do, do we, Claire? We have one more left, and it's from J28 Staley, who donated $5 for Operator Starsky. Love the shout-out to Life of Brian. Please, more tales like The Hill. I'll have to email you my Life of Brian story. Blessed are the cheesemakers. Slava Ukraini, roast the orcs. And also, without a question, we received um, two euro from Mark Nick, if you'd like a question or a statement, please um, add us in the chat. And we are caught up. Excellent. Wow, we did it. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Um, very big thanks. Uh, let's see here. We we could probably go right to some viewer questions if Dave mm -hmm. is uh, throat rested and all set and ready to come back to us. I absolutely can. I know that Commander has had uh, some issues with the internet connection. Maybe we should get them in now while they're they're fresh. Oh yes, good shout, good shout. Um, I actually was going to ask about the dam and the consequences of having the dam um, break, as far as ecological or like tidal waves or something. I you would know better than I. Um. But when you were talking about the Nazis, I can tell you most definitely in the United States, the Nazis are pro-Putin. In Charlottesville, they were, amongst other things, they were screaming, Russia is our friend. So just wanted to get that out of the way. And I was doing a, um, I was writing a script for, to explain why, um, dealing with the same thing that the Jews did in Hanukkah. And I went to the book, The Antichrist. And there you can find Vladimir Putin's um, psychology. But anyway, back to the dam. Um, what will exactly happen? Uh, I will just uh, briefly return to, to your point on uh, Nazis. So in July uh, 2021, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence of the United States uh, published their report that uh, Russian Federation support or racially uh, and ethnically motivated violent extremists. Uh, Russian Federation support of racially and ethnically motivated violent extremists, uh, it can be find, found online and it was made prior to this invasion, by the way. Uh, so uh, you can ask any uh, intelligence, uh, because I had opportunity to, to talk to them about it, uh, any in intelligence uh, in the Europe or in the US will tell you that far leftists and far rightists in America and in Europe are controlled by Kremlin. You got to scratch far leftist or far rightist and under under this layer, you you will find uh, a, a bunch of rubles, basically. Um, as for the dam, we uh, consulted uh, with our uh, ecologists. So they say that, uh, of course, uh, one of the biggest uh, threats is that uh, there there will be um, increase of the level of the Black Sea. Uh, there is uh, something like uh, 18, uh, 18 million tons, I think, uh, of uh, water stored in that uh, Kachovsky reservoir, uh, which is pretty dangerous. And um, another thing is that uh, I think it's mostly related to Russians because in case they uh, destroy that dam, they will stop uh, water supply to Crimea. But who cares about people in Crimea, right? Like, when did Russians even care about them? They don't. It's a society um, where there. I was watching um, UATV, and um, one of the things they do 
is they teach the weak obey the strong and they have a culture of um basically bully culture toxic machismo they have this uh, this comes actually from this uh, prison culture uh i think i told you about it in, in some of the streams so they have this uh, widespread prison culture in russia uh they have panatia panatia is like this criminal codex and uh, a lot of teenagers uh enjoy this shit they like they dream of getting jailed you know um they have this prison chanson and prison chanson in russia is very different from french chanson because french chanson is actually an art uh unlike that shit uh your ears will be bleeding if you ever have a chance to, to hear that D don't even risk don't even try to do that uh and uh the in, in this prison culture they have uh this loch loch is is not a lake in scotland loch in russian culture is a uh like a loser that uh requires to be bullied and that's what they do um it's like uh, when they see some kind of nerd they you know um so like i i understand that those things happen all around the world there are weaker people there are nerds that cannot protect them in schools there are bullies that bully them and stuff like that but only in russia it's shaped into a culture unfortunately we had the same in ukraine but luckily for ukraine i didn't see that shit for maybe 10 years already uh they disappeared somewhere i don't know um but in russia it's still preserved unfortunately doesn't doesn't the um Zaporiz, Zaporizhia, ah, geez, I still I'm sorry Zaporizhia. I still can't pronounce it. I'm sorry say that again Zaporizhia Zaporizhia um nuclear power plant get its cooling water from that same uh from the damned water so they would lose their uh their uh cooling uh their uh supply if that dam blows is that correct uh you are correct uh, as far as i remember they receive uh, th this channel basically that is cooling uh, Zaporizhian power plant, uh, and, and you said Zaporizhian like a native Amer uh, a native Ukrainian, by the way. Uh, yeah. So, uh, as far as I remember, they take water from that uh, Kahovsky water reservoir, and uh, there is a there is a risk that uh, they will not have enough water coming into this channel uh, to cool down Zaporizhian power plant so yeah there there is such a risk and uh, it can be a catastrophe because um in case this happened we will have to react very very fast we cannot do that because this uh, power plant is uh, almost fully controlled by russians so we cannot do anything in case uh, this shit explodes and if it does oh my god if you if you're permitted to speculate uh, what do you think are the chances that uh, he's going to do it um i rather expect that they will try to do that uh because otherwise they would not plant mines uh around the operation uh, around the dam okay i made it <laughs> um should we do a few uh shout outs then claire is yes. uh are y'all yeah. set and ready all right well yeah we can we can do that okay so for for five dollars from gene mark pagan owl we have prime minister kim pamble for british pm <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> I get the humor. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of there's. We could vote a lot of people in, right? What do I miss here? 
Well, Kim Campbell ended up as Prime Minister of Canada due to political circumstances and whatnot, and is literally a record setter for shortness in office. And I think Lettuce Head Trust or whatever her name is there actually beat it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a play on the shortness of the recent Prime Minister in in England. Yeah. 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 It's kind of a little bit of a dig. A double dig. <laughs> okay, so Junebug72 sending $5, and she says, Officer Starsky, has the U.S. responded to Zelensky's plea, re the dam situation? Uh, we we are expecting their response at this point. Uh, at this point, uh, Nothing that I've heard of, unfortunately. Okay. Simon Shorthouse for uh, A, I think me... Twenty dollars, maybe Australian. I'm not sure. Does that would be my know? guess. Yeah, I, I'm not as good with the uh, the amount of the money where it comes from as Amy. My apologies, but I'll give better. Does Starsky know if ZNPP will still get water if the dam is destroyed? Also, I think the Article Five question may have been related to Russia firing a missile near an RAF rivet joint plane over the Black Sea. Uh, so again, uh, I think we're lucky to have Nick here among us because uh, I'm not a not NATO soldier, and uh, Nick uh, has more competence in answering this question. Mm-hmm. Nick, uh, Nick seems which, to know everything. Mm-hmm. I, I, genuinely, when you said NATO, I, I thought you were going to say Nazi. It's like I, I, I know I'm not an expert, <laughs> but, but Nick. Okay. Oh, oh, Dave! <laughs> oh, I was like, whoa! It's, it's always <laughs> such a pleasure to see you, Dave. Um, mm-hmm. Nathan, <laughs> you know, you know, you know Dave. What I, what I like about having you on a screen, Dave, is the more you talk, the smarter I look. Anyways, uh, please continue. <laughs> wow. Okay. Shots fired. Are you taking that question, Nick? Or like, okay. <laughs> I'm ducking and weaving, but who's answering the question? <laughs> it, 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 it's the same answer I gave last time. It has to yes, be a deliberate exactly. attack on a, on a member of NATO. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, there's 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 wiggle room there if they really want it. And in this case, they don't. They're going to wait until it's mm-hmm. an actual attack, and I highly doubt Putin's going to do it. Uh, if there's anything close to that, if NATO wants to get involved, they can. They really don't. So... Um, they, they mm-hmm. uh, having said that, and Starsky had said something earlier that I think is actually really important. These are bullies, and uh, there's a great reason to stop them. Everybody knows the reason, which is, hey, they'll continue and they'll wash across Europe, and all of that is completely true. Uh, right. But it's not just Putin. He's going to be replaced with somebody. We still have Kim Jong Un. We mm-hmm. still have um, uh, Khomeini. And mm-hmm. if they see that that this kind of behavior is rewarded, if he gets to keep Crimea, if he gets to, then other people will do this and it will affect everybody. This is, this is the, 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 exactly. the it's, it's genocide and it's evil and um, all it's, moral agents have to stop. Set a horrible precedent for anybody thinking of anything like that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. For um, $5, uh, Zom1103 says, Starsky, what is your Halloween costume, and why isn't it Professor X? And Fudge could be Magneto. Uh, so I've sent my Halloween costume to the chat. I hope that uh, Mr. <laughs> Dalton can uh, can put it on the screen for you. Oh, that uh, and it's a genuine one. I used it uh, in uh, Krasnohorivka, I think. Yeah, it was in Krasnohorivka in twenty. 20- 16 2015 mm-hmm. you gotta love it uh and what was the the second one it's professor x um with uh magneto yeah i think that that would um ah well f- it, fudge uh, fudge is gonna be like uh a reindeer i think a reindeer okay yeah. that's cool that, that's cool yeah that uh, that's prof- my yeah. That's Professor my, uh, X is the leader of the X Men. It is a it's a it's a fictional character uh, that does all of the uh, uh, superheroes that are genetically modified. Yeah, yeah, you know he had no yeah. hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was no, bald. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you got it. So you know who he is. Okay, great. All right. Yeah, there of course. Go. Yeah, yeah, and and that's my actual Halloween costume. So oh. this is how I uh, went oh. on patrol. Oh. I swear, I I was I I looked like that. Okay. 
And you're gonna have a reindeer with you. This gonna be cool. I'm gonna have a reindeer. I'm gonna give Fuchs <laughs> like um, uh, he will have a jumper, uh, like uh, red jumper, this cute one mm -hmm. with like uh, fluffy horns and uh, I don't know. Oh, now that we need pictures of. I'm sure everybody would appreciate <laughs> appreciate yeah. that. And we have one more from Arnold Degans uh, for for five. Are there any predictions on how long it's going to take to repair all the damage done? So much devastation we see in the videos. Wow, good one. Excellent question. Thank you. It's going to take a lot of years, guys, but uh, I believe that uh, with the international help, with the international support, uh, we'll be able to finally finish rebuilding maybe 10 years uh, because we're going about massive destruction uh more than 100,000 residential buildings were completely destroyed in ukraine there are uh, cities uh, uh like chernihiv for example the uh, central part of city is more or less preserved but uh, everything around it the, the suburbs are destroyed by Russian missiles and artillery um, and tanks when they had fights there. Uh, and uh, there are towns like Rubizhna, Severodonetsk, city of Mariupol that are almost completely erased uh, by their bombings and uh, artillery. So it's gonna take, just imagine how much time it takes to completely um, build a bunch of cities from scratch, probably that much it will take yeah i mean even at china's pace it take a long time yeah and we are not china unfortunately we don't build a, a skyscraper a day yeah, um, yeah but, it does. Uh, i mean <laughs> yeah but uh, i anticipate that in the end we will have a lot of uh, international um construction and construction companies mm -hmm. uh, a lot of volunteers uh hello visit Ukraine and uh, stay here and help us to rebuild our country. They yeah. will be paid, of course, because uh, we already collect uh, uh, a rebuilding fund. And uh, it's uh, we anticipate that uh, the foundation of this fund uh, will be those uh, uh, frozen Russian uh, assets that were arrested uh, in the European banks. So we will have what to pay with and uh, i'm sure that there will be uh, volunteers from mm -hmm. around the, the world to ready to come to ukraine and uh, help us yeah that's the important part is that once uh, perhaps the active war is over right like it doesn't stop there there's the reconstruction there's the need for everything uh, the uh, rebuilding of everything inside and out we're going to still need more help and still have to support Ukraine completely. Huge. In that. Yeah. yeah, It doesn't stop. And we have one more. Let me turn it back over to questions. Uh, a statement from Inkboy for $5 euro. As a person living in one of the Baltic countries, I can assure you that violating NATO airspace is not triggering Article 5. Thank you for your contribution. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good show. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are caught up, Dick. All right, so uh, let's do uh, let's head it right back over to do uh, Dave and get some viewer uh, questions in before we start pushing on time limits here. Yeah, people are loving talking about the drones. There's uh, one from Rodent, no last name. Mark Hamill set, helped send 500 drones to Ukraine. How does it feel having Luke Skywalker on your side? <laughs> it's amazing. It uh, seems that we are on the right side of power. Uh, yeah, so the, yeah. the force is with us. <laughs> I love it. It's just so amazing. You know, Mark Hamill, he's awesome. You know, still not the best actor, but he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, get, given the number. As I, I threw out earlier, that would be about, if, I'm, if my math is correct, about 10 million US dollars, which is probably peanuts for him, but it's like, that would be pretty amazing. Like, this is a one private investment. You wouldn't expect that from just one, one guy. 
yeah, yeah the, guys uh, the I, stakes there yeah i i want to say that um there's no chance we uh, lose this war with with such a uh, you know with such friends and such support there's no chance for us to lose this war it it will be embarrassing uh yeah. stephen king is supporting ukraine yeah yeah I my my freaking idol mm-hmm. i don't know uh quentin tarantino by the way uh he uh, he posted updates uh, on his instagram i believe uh, a lot of updates from ukraine uh so and I, awesome. like it makes me happy because you know uh to me it means that uh Uh, Ukraine stopped being, uh, you know, some unknown country in the shadow of Russia, finally, because it was dangerous. We didn't like it. Mm. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, we finally can be part of international society because uh, this is what we wanted for for such a long time. And uh, we were unable to do that for different the, uh, reasons. It, you know what I foresee coming for sure is... um when the the global community steps into ukraine to help with rebuilding after that is going to open up some long term economic trade and growth and all kinds of things as it happens too it should end up being a very positive thing you know once everything's fixed and you know the sadness part is not quite so But you know, I, I do see some good things coming from that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we we were part of international trade. Uh, the only thing was that uh, we had um, uh, we didn't have this agreement that we have right now with the European Union uh, regarding uh, taxes. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, now it will be. I'm sure Nick could explain it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, no, I, and, I, I actually I don't know that one. So, <laughs> Sorry. oh wow. Uh, yeah. So uh, you had to, uh, for example, uh, you cannot uh, go to any other country in Europe, even though we can travel around the Europe uh, without uh, visa required. But uh, it's not like you can travel to another country, get a cheap but good car car in a good condition and bring it to ukraine um and use it because you would you are required to you were required to pay some crazy amount of money uh i'm glad that we don't have that shit anymore uh it will yeah. be cancelled or or is it already cancelled uh which makes life much easier luckily uh so um so yeah we were part of this trade but uh, it wasn't as uh, accessible as uh, it will be now um which again makes me very very happy cool yeah uh, cool. Dick, uh is, is, is that is that a telescope behind you Yeah, uh Celestron 130 e- uh equatorial mount. It's got the little motor for, you know, um pre-computer tracking. Uh it's a decent one. We got a couple of Barlows and a nice kit of lenses and everything. Um funny thing when my my son and I we bought the telescope uh, a couple years back Christmas and we get it home and we set it all up and that's when it started to hit me how much more I was going to end up spending on Barlow's and eyepieces and whatnot. It didn't take long for me to go, Oh, this is just the beginning, but it's totally worth it. Right. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I had a smaller, uh, Celestron, um, and, uh, I used it to spy after my neighbors and uh, it was very <laughs> nice. So, uh, in 2019, I think I brought it to, to our recon guys uh because my neighbors told me that they will call police next time uh so uh, i brought it to to my na- uh, recon guys uh, to the svetodarsk bulge they painted it like green and stuff <laughs> oh my god okay um we got a couple of shouts if claire's all set and ready we should uh switch into high gear here okay Uh, thank you, Dick. Uh, from Zong, 
1103-410. What would be a good sources for following directly what is happening ecologically there in Ukraine? Like people doing what you're doing, but focused on the environment. Oh. Okay, let me see. So uh, uh, let me check this for you if this is available in English. Yes. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, um, it's a good question, actually, because I never thought about it. Uh, okay, yeah. let's do this thing. I will check uh, with uh, our foreign ministry what kind of informational resources we have in English regarding this, because it's it's, it's very important. We have this uh, big uh, news portal in Ukraine. It's called uh, UKR.net. Ukrnet, um, where you can basically see all of the news compiled in one place, but unfortunately, it's only in Ukrainian and Russian. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, let us know, and then we can shut it out in a community post, and you can mm -hmm. as well, and whatnot, and then boom, you know. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. Yeah. Going. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from level 70 for uh, 699, how can Ukraine lose when it's supported by Luke Skywalker? <laughs> and then, <laughs> I agree. Thank you very much. Of course. Uh, how can we? No, he ran, uh, Mark Hamill ran a fundraiser also for, for drones and et cetera on his, uh, on his page. And he's Luke Skywalker. So uh, from Siri, Jeffrey Claude, $2. What can a U.S. citizen do to get Biden to do more? Like, I, you have any suggestions on how us Americans can encourage American politics? Guys, um, I, I think that you you know better than me because I'm Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. I have you, you have, that. You have mm -hmm. bigger experience with democracy than I do. Yes. Yes, I, Nick? I, I have no interest in getting Biden to do more. That's not entirely true, but that's not the concern. The concern right now is the Republicans have said that if they get back in power, they will cut as much funding as possible for Ukraine and they will get us out of it entirely. That is staggering. That is. Um, that's what's going to happen if they get back um, mm -hmm. uh, Congress and that's their goal. And they, uh, whether or not they're going to succeed really depends on who you ask and, and what they're assuming going into it. Mm -hmm. So um, the problem isn't getting Biden to do more. It's to keep the... Uh, Republicans from ending our support, and that is their goal. Exactly. It takes too long to yeah. get it through anyway. Uh, to have it all reversed would be heartbreaking. Uh, no, I agree, Nick. You know, remember, no vote, no voice, Americans. You know, if you feel strong, yeah. get out there. Tell them so. Okay, from Martin Lefebvre for $5. Starsky, you think the forced evacuations of civilians in Kherson may be just Russia wanting human shields when crossing the i'm three pro more music please um yes we had such a suspicion uh we absolutely know that uh, they relocated a lot of ukrainian children to the russian territory um as of today th th there's something like tens of tens of thousands of children that were stolen from Ukraine and relocated to Russia, basically deported from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, so knowing Russians, yeah, they will absolutely use Ukrainians as a shield because uh, no matter what they say about like annexation of those territories, technically they're still Ukrainian mm -hmm. and uh, they care about Ukrainians even less than they care about their own people not sure if they do at all mm. okay. and from sam williams welcome sam for new zealand ten dollars there's no chance of losing this war due to the sacrifices of the ukrainian people they are pillars of strength in this shitty war and then she sends a statement to you in ukraine i believe which can be translated to together we are strong and victory will be ours how did you know that uh, Google Translate. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I make no claims to know in Ukrainian. Google Translate told me. <laughs> that blew me away. I thought for sure she was just reading it. No, honest bear. Absolutely. Google is my friend. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> well, thank you. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. Can, you, can uh, you read it in Ukraine for them? Oh, 
Starsky, can you see it? Can you read it for them? Because uh, I can never I pronounce it. I can, I can read it. I'm slow, but... Um, uh, Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> six, is that six? So, Razom is um, Sila uh, e uh, perem, uh, Peremova Udie za uh, na, Nami. You know, Nick, there's pills that can help you with that, Nick. There's pills that can help you with that, Nick. I'll give you the link. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen Dave on them. I've seen the effects. Thank you. Oh, I'm all no, set. Oh, no. Well, to bring it back to Sam, thank you very much, Sam. I'm sure we all share that sentiment, regardless of how Nick just mangled that. We all do agree with you. It is a wonderful <laughs> sentiment, and I shall forever use Google Translate. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> wise. That's very wise. Okay. okay. Uh, there's just one more before I turn it back over to you guys. Uh, from Inkboy45. For five euro after war is over how will ukraine deal with all the unexploded russian ordinance it's a it's a big problem actually because uh there was a lot of them there are still uh eod's uh, and uh, mm -hmm. russian shells being found in hostomel mm -hmm. since wow. uh, since april uh, so there, there will be a lot of problems. Uh, it, it will take years. Uh, I'm sure that uh, I... unfortunately there will be casualties because uh, a lot of area is still mined. Uh, but um, again, Ukrainian uh, engineers have a lot of experience uh, because we did the mining in different areas in, in the former Yugoslavia, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, of course, I know that uh, a lot of volunteers will be helping them as well. Mm. I have a great idea, actually. What we have to do is get a bunch of B-52s and we could load them up with all the unexploded ordnance and whatnot. And, you know, maybe drop it on the Kremlin and some other places like that. Sounds you know? good. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. You know, you could bring the little ones and let them push one off the back. You know, there you go. Hey, look, kid, you got Putin's house. Woohoo! Nice shot, buddy. <laughs> oh, wow. Ukrainian National Guard supports this statement. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a daddy daughter day, but for like the military. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Unless they're all mobilized, there will be only older older people to play with that. Mm. Well, you know, at least somebody will get the fun out of it, though. Yeah. Right. I think that's the main thing. You know, taking some good old fashioned enjoyment from the destruction of your enemies' homes. There you go. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we still got a little bit of time. We got get a couple of questions in or you know, where should we go here? I can't do the I can't do uh any of the the jokes and gags. OBS is hanging on by a thread here, so I dare not touch anything but just do what we're doing until the credits. I I despise at version 28 and mm -hmm. i'll fight you if you say otherwise <laughs> i never should have done it i'm gonna go back and fix it up this week though it's driving me crazy um so yeah why don't we turn to dave for a couple of questions here and uh you know see where we end up sure thing i'm just trying to find one of the questions that was on um, I'll find the exact person in a second. It was a question basically going back to talking about the uh, the grain shipments and how they might have slowed down. Um, I don't know if you know any information on that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. Uh, the last thing I uh, heard about it uh, was that uh, Russians were blocking it. And uh, we also heard that uh, Russians uh, stole uh, 100 million worth of grain 100 million dollars worth of grain wow out of into so how many does that feed do you know how does that convert a lot it, it's in millions I it, it's a million yes it's in millions of dollars yeah 
that's pretty fucking scandalous. I mean, not wow. a lot of that goes to what, like Africa and places that are just being sort of dragged yeah, into uh, this. Which uh, suggests Tunisia, um, Tunisia, Morocco, uh, those countries, uh, they require Ukrainian grain. Um, uh, other countries uh, deeper into African continent. I'm, I know for sure about uh, Tunisia and Morocco because uh, they have uh, problems with f fertile lands, and uh, that's why we, we trade grain with them and make sure that they don't suffer without food. Uh, so those those countries uh, can suffer from that from from those shortages. Yeah, I, I know when we. We're talking about this a few months ago, they uh, they have to go traveling through Turkey um, on the other side of the, the Black Sea. And in order to get ships into that sea, you have to go through Istanbul, I think. Is that right? So the, the, the diplomacy between everyone and the Turkish, basically the, Tur the Turks hold uh, a significant number of cards in, in this I don't want to refer to it as a game, but you know what I mean. That, that this is um, it, it's concerning. Then when we hear various different talks of, I can't quite remember what we said maybe last week, the other week about closer ties between is it Russia setting up energy in something to do with Turkey just to try and sort of divert their their oil through them into Europe. Am I getting my wires crossed? Uh, rather through uh, Armenia, I think, uh, but okay. uh, I I don't think Armenia um, is a big friend of Turkey. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, for, uh, from my, from what I remember, um, Azerbaijan basically said that uh, they can build uh, this line and help Europe with uh, their resources, with their oil and gas. Hmm. Um, well, we still got time for a few more. So uh why don't we uh why don't we get to Dave again and get a couple of viewer questions in before it's time for our goodbyes and farewells and all that fun stuff. Yeah, sure thing. The actual question from Sweet, it was actually very similar. Um I heard that the grain shipments have slowed down. I just know uh, how Ukraine can demolish the Russian Black Sea fleet. Um, I don't know the the logistics of that and and how easy that would be and whether that would constitute something bigger than just. I guess you know you've already you've taken out the Moscow and they're raping your kids. Fuck it, just just bomb them. I don't care. Yeah. Um. So the reason we cannot destroy Russian Black Sea Fleet is because it stays out of range of our anti ship missiles, those that were used to destroy their flagship Moskva that turned into a freaking submarine. Uh, but uh, uh, currently they are based on the southeastern uh, part of the Black Sea, uh, southeast, southeast from Crimea, basically. Uh, we cannot reach them there yet. Hmm. There's a couple people are asking if Max got enough money for a car yet. Um, I don't think so. Uh, I called him today. He he would have told me. Uh, but I know that he's collecting uh, money for a car. And um, this charity Vatra, by the way, uh, those girls that uh, bring uh, like vests and helmets to Ukrainian soldiers and uniform, uh, they also collect money uh, for them. Uh, for for this car, because uh, on the front lines, transportation is you know, you you will be waiting for your bus for a long time, um, which is very crucial for them because they're press service and yeah, uh, they they're doing a great job uh, uh, recording those videos from the front lines. Uh, I've I saw a bunch of videos today. Max uh, sent me them uh, through Telegram. His content is worth seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree there for sure. Absolutely. 
Um, so let's see. I think I think Dave had another one, and then uh, it's just kind of you know chitter chatter until we're done. Yeah, it was an interesting one. Um, I wasn't quite sure what this meant. From which Richard Parnell should the Wagner Wagner soldiers be treated as prisoners of war or treated as terrorists? So according to international legislation, they will be treated as uh, criminals, as mercenaries, because there is no uh, international re legislation regulating uh, mercenaries, basically. Uh, those are criminals uh, in case uh, the court recognizes them as uh, terrorists. Of course, they will be treated as terrorists. Yeah. So just uh, to clarify, uh, even just from my own understanding, what's the difference between the, the mercenary? They like a uh, so, private so, individual? Uh, it's like this. Uh, there is a uh, legitimate army, okay? Uh, legitimate army regulated by the state uh, where people pledge their alliance to the state they receive their weapons and uh, they are regulated by the state uh, then there are mercenaries uh, there are legitimate mercenaries like uh, the french foreign legion for example uh, then there is uh, uh, like international foreign in international legion here in ukraine another one uh, then there are uh, different groups uh, for example wagner was used uh, in syria they try to acquire control over different uh, oil facilities uh, they were used in africa again to acquire russian control over uh, diamond mines uh, and stuff like that uh, those will be treated as terrorists as criminals according to international legislation uh, if uh, a uh, there are combatants, okay, representatives of the fighting uh, parties, uh, then there are everybody else uh, mercenaries, uh, I don't know, criminals, bandits, uh, you asshats, dumb fucks. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the question, therefore, is how do you know who is legitimately as like a private bounty hunter and who is being ordered to do a particular task um, so it's very simple currently uh, according to uh, European Parliament uh, Russian army is a terrorist regime as well is part of terrorist regime um, but uh, still, we treat them according to Geneva Convention because uh, nobody cancelled Geneva Convention. Uh, then there is Wagner. Wagner is a private military company that uh, officially doesn't exist, but uh, its chief, Prigozhin, is a big friend of uh, Putin. And uh, he used Surprise. this... Um, of course. Um, and uh, he used this uh, Wagner group in different conflicts around the world uh, when Russia would prefer not to be officially involved into some kind of conflict like, uh, I don't know, like in uh, Syria in, in those uh, uh, oil aff affairs. Uh, so uh, they would use those. Um, in Donbass, for example, since uh, 2016, I guess, uh, this Wagner group is uh, also introduced. Um, people from Donbass also were recruited into this Wagner mercenary company and brought to Syria. Uh, so, yeah, they use, th they use those people uh, wherever they want to uh make sure that officially russia is not involved <clears throat> um, and also uh, you remember that video where uh, russians were recruiting uh, convicts from mm -hmm. a russian prison uh, so that was prigozhin he basically was recruiting them into wagner group it's like uh, they are trained by the russian army they are given russian uh, supplies from russian army 
but uh, officially they are not part of the Russian army. Um, and uh, they are not combatants. They are basically like mercenaries, like criminals. Right. Um, let's turn to Claire here. We got a couple of show notes we can do, and uh, we're caught up, and we can say some goodbyes and stuff. Okay. So, uh, first, a statement from Mr. E30, who has donated uh, 1542. I watched a reject a rejected green shipment, now only usable as animal feed, unloaded in Turkey due to salt water contamination. The ship was old and rusted. Reason given is the major green shipping companies are worried about traveling in the Black Sea. Thank you very much for your donation and statement. Wow. And yeah. from, mm? the, the problem is not traveling uh around the Black Sea. The problem is that uh, those ships are being held mm -hmm. uh, in some spot for quite a while, for, for a month maybe, and of course the, the grain gets spoiled. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the problem. That, that's we terrible. didn't have such problems previously before Russia attacked Ukraine. Yeah, that's, un that's terrible. It that affects everything. Right? Uh, from Chris Phillips for 5 Euro. Starsky, do you think the orcs will come from Putler's swingers party friend from the north? Uh, I still believe so, because uh, we have information that uh, uh, Russian troops uh, are uh, equipping and uh, developing their uh military base uh, specifically it's in the area of uh Zabravka in mm -hmm. Belarus so recently we saw um uh, satellite images uh, from that area we noticed that uh, they brought a lot of anti air uh systems uh like S300 systems uh, they installed the, them uh, around this airfield basically this airfield is given to Russians completely wow. uh, by Belarusian government. Um, and we expect that Russians will use this airport because it's very close to Ukraine. It's uh, south of Hommel, I think. Um, they will be using this airfield uh, as an air bridge between the main Russian uh, territory and uh, Belarus in order to feed that uh, group that that will be attacking Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, we are preparing to that. I'm 100% confident that they will attack from the north in, eventually. And then, of course, you will have a lot of uh, new videos from the front lines, from Operator Starsky. But anyways, uh, the problem with that is I will be happy to uh, fail with this prediction. Honestly, I will be happy if this never happens and you will be, you know, like laughing at me saying like I, I suck with my predictions. Uh, but uh, we are preparing for that. Uh, I'm sure it will happen. I analyzed the messages that were uh, shared by Belarusian government. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that it's going to happen eventually at some point. Uh, at, at this point, uh, Lukashenko is uh, trying to uh, trying to avoid this direct involvement uh, as much as he can, but uh, he cannot do that forever. And uh, eventually, he will crack and he will give an order. So yeah, mm. uh, I, I I will have to change the the background. Uh, for a while. <laughs> we had a great comment from uh, Ugly German Truth. If Russian forces equip in Belarus, the Ukrainians will need to be better prepared for things like hay forks, spears, wagon forts. <laughs> this sounds sick. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna grab a sword <laughs> and a horse. I'm, I'm not sure if uh, Fuji's gonna like it, but. <laughs> Either way, it's a good look for you, Starsky. It, it, it. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Belarus has, has deliberately 
given away most of its weapons to the Russian forces. So they've given their weapons to the Russian forces saying, oh, we support you, we support you, here are all the weapons. That way they have an excuse not to go in because they don't have the weapons now. So that's exactly, he's, he's right. It's gonna, if they go in at this point, it's gonna be pitchforks and like those, <laughs> you know those, my daughter makes these cardboard cut out things for Halloween. It's like, that's gonna be their armor. Their body yeah, armor yeah. is gonna be like boxes mm -hmm. that they just put on. <laughs> Slingshots and spitballs, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i analyzed uh i analyzed uh belarusian special forces they made this um, key cast music video about belarusian special forces being deployed on the border to uh deflect ukrainian invasion into belarus you know um and uh it's it's hilarious like i saw the same mistakes we made in 2014 probably in terms of you know they have uh, i i wouldn't say that they have uh, bad equipment uh bad gear no it's not like that but uh judging from the way they, they are being deployed from from those cars trying to cover themselves which looks cringy um judging from the fact that uh, they don't mask their equipment using grass branches and stuff like that um oh my god i mean it, it it's so cringy to watch as if you're watching ukrainian army in 2010 um yeah their their equipment that those like black boots black uh, knee pads that you can see from mile away <laughs> because like there's nothing black like there's nothing completely black in the nature um yeah. in 2016 when my first company was trained my first uh first infantry company of the first infantry battalion of my brigade uh, we were trained and uh, instructors explained us that guys you gotta make sure that you don't produce any sound when you move that you don't produce any image of being human at all uh, in the nature you gotta mask uh, your face because if even if you are completely disguised and blurred with the environment your face is the thing that uh, anybody will recognize mile away, even if you're wearing yeah. like uh, like balaclava mask, you know, uh, uh, because pattern, this is how this is how our pattern, brain works. Yeah, it's pattern recognition. It's been bred into us through e eons of evolution, right? I mean, it's a inherent skill that was needed for that is needed. You know, it's just life. Yeah, absolutely, and that's why we spent countless hours uh just wandering around forests uh, in, in our training grounds and uh, learning how to mask ourselves and uh, blur with the environment and stuff and uh, make sure that uh, our gear doesn't you know produce any sound uh, and our water as well doesn't produce any sound when you, when we move run and stuff like that funny moment was when uh it was like um so we spent like either two or three days uh in the fields uh with all our gear with all our ammunition i had this uh 10 kilogram backpack i i i hate those days uh but it was funny and uh uh yeah it's like we masked our, ourselves completely like we had uh, the camouflage uh, on our faces and stuff but eventually it's you know erased mm -hmm. uh, it, it got deleted uh, so <laughs> there was a guy in my platoon uh, this guy was kind of you know there are like uh people uh, like clumsy people sometimes they get dirty here and there like without noticing it like and they don't care pretty much so this guy was digging a foxhole and uh you know like he rubbed his nose and then his eye and like and so he was like his face was black 
from the soil. <laughs> Uh, it was unintentionally, but uh, when our battalion commander lined us, lined us up, he said, "Oh, check him out. This dude cares about his, you know, uh, <laughs> these guys. So he deserve a, deserves a day off." <laughs> and we were like, "What? The, what the hell?" And then the other day, it like uh, it repeated because we were digging. Uh, like foxholes in other area and uh this guy was dirty like a freaking devil and uh uh again our battalion commander was talking to us and he's like oh look at him you gotta take him as an example because he cares about this so he has another day off like, oh shit <laughs> yeah it was funny and then we had a freaking deer big wild deer jumping into a trench with our guys. It was hilarious. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, it, crazy. Like, I was I was smoking in my foxhole. I heard this uh, sound as if like some big dude wearing all kinds of gear that you can imagine just running like crazy. And I was like, what what the hell? So I peeked outside, I saw like a huge freaking deer. And it was running to towards my foxhole. He saw, like th this deer saw me, it turned and jumped into a bigger trench with my boys. It was hilarious. Wow, cool. Very cool. Um, Well, we're a little over time, but I mean, I don't think we're... You know, if it's not too late for you, Starsky, it seems like everybody's really enjoying the chit chat. We can always keep her around for a few more minutes here. Yeah, uh, what sure does everybody enough. think? Yeah. You know, I'm, uh, I mean, it's a nice Saturday afternoon for me. It's perfect. <laughs> it really works yeah. well. You know, um, that deer wanted to enlist. <laughs> it really did. In fact, um, at first, uh, like first deer tried to attack us. We were, uh, our column was moving through the forest. We heard the same sound, and the deer just flew through, you know, through through our column. Luckily, without killing anybody, and it was big. And uh, then that one, we had a lot of deers there in, in our forest. Uh, one time, uh, so we had this war gaming. Like uh, one platoon would hide in the forest. The task for another platoon was to find this platoon and eliminate it. And, uh, of course, we're, we tried to mask ourselves and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, I was lying down uh, among, like, uh, younger trees, younger pine trees. At some point, I noticed that it smells like shit around me uh, then i realized that the, the the place that i picked the the spot that i picked as my hiding spot uh basically was used by all local deers as a public toilets and those little bowls that they leave you know after themselves those they were like everywhere in my uh, i had this small system you know and <laughs> the, the, those those bowls i had to pick them from from this mall <laughs> took quite a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. I, uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to have about 10 minutes because I was just informed by my son that I better get lunch going soon or I am in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, actually, actually, I have like a video. Oh. Okay. From from those times, and I'm gonna throw it to you. Yeah. If, oh, here it is. Um, it's on a on Facebook, but I hope that you will able to see it. Um, but it's like we were running with my company. I was a uh, first company sergeant uh, at that time, and uh, we were running and shouting some silly song that i wrote for for my company uh 
it, it was so cringy. Like I'm analyzing it right now. It sounds so cringy after all the deployments that we had. But back then we were just like, you know, training and stuff. And uh, yeah, it was cool. I am. I almost got it here. Okay. Oh, well, while while we're uh, working on that, I did I did want to uh, say one uh, very important thing because I think this got this got um, overlooked. Um, when I think of the best actors in human history, I think of Sir Lawrence Olivier, Sir Anthony Hopkins, and Mark Hamill, Dick. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd catch flack for that remark. <laughs> have you have you heard his Joker? Really? We yeah. actually are going to have to have this discussion, apparently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, when you throw Joker into the mix, okay. But, you know, oh, but I wanted to go and get some power converters. I mean, it's he was just a kid. rough. I know. He was little. Oh, he was young. I know. I'm with you, Nick. He, he, hey, do you think he has no room to talk. He's never even seen Princess Bride. Just disregard. Oh, 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 dear. Oh, that's okay. it. I, that's I'm not it. even, I can't even, yeah. yeah, I can't even admit I know him anymore. I get in trouble for this so often. I got to watch it just to shut you people up. As an American, it's, it's, it's why you're over there in Canada. That alone is the state. The borders are locked. Stay there. Oh, that's funny. Okay, here. I do have this video ready. So, uh, let me get this set up so everybody can enjoy it, not just, uh, you know, us twits and whatnot. Okay, here we go. All right. So um, is there audio? Do I have to, like, I, I never use yeah, Facebook. There okay, there is. Okay. are my troops and that um, whose mom was that th that <laughs> that wasn't mom that was our medic and she still is uh, our medic yeah uh, the thing about uh, being a company NCO unlike uh, being an officer uh, like a captain, for example, is that officers sometimes they have like benefits. You know, they, uh, again, I'm talking from the officer's standpoint, they have like benefits. If you want to ditch like a PT, for example, you, you can do that. Mm. You're, like you're an officer. Uh, which again wasn't really cool because our uh, battalion commander is like an NCO for officers okay uh, so if they ditch that he will punish them but in case you are NCO you cannot do that no right. um, I remember you wake up like um, in December and our tent from inside it was covered with ice and uh, i wake up i open this uh, sleeping bag uh, and like going out is the least thing i want to do at 6 a.m in december in the middle of ukraine yeah. um, and then uh, my uh, uh, company commander he's like dude go bring them to the pt I'm like, yes, sir. So I go out. Uh, 
I line up all the guys, the whole company. And because I am the the company first sergeant, uh, I gonna run with them all the distance. And I, of course, because I like, I gotta be there. Uh, like, th th I gotta show them the ex example, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I gotta run first. Uh, I gotta show them the way and stuff like that. Um, now I'm an officer. Yeah, now you get to tell others to do it and kick your feet up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it doesn't help. It still doesn't help because uh, whenever our guys run a 30 kilometer march, I have to run with them and make a video of that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and a... I ran for I ran four times. Yeah. I... <laughs> Counting. <laughs> Oh, well, um, I hate to kill a good chat, but let's turn it to Claire. We got a shout out to do, and then um, we should probably say our goodbyes and all, because I will be slaughtered by my own child if I don't get lunch ready soon. So, oh, yeah, let's support the decrease of bloodshed. Totally. Okay. <laughs> so from Mark Beiser for Tin. He makes the statement, Boston Dynamics gun dog robots for Ukraine. Not very combat effective, but even just hearing them near your position on the battlefield would sow terror in the orcs. <laughs> Sounds interesting. <laughs> um, Thank you, Mark, Ukrainian, very much. The Ukrainian army uh, presented this uh, octocopter, I think, like bigger drone equipped with uh pkm with uh the machine gun so basically now we can shoot orcs from the air which is amazing uh, and as for the boston dynamics uh, yeah they're probably not very effective but they look cool well I think on that note, why don't we do a little goodbyes and whatnot and, you know, shell what you got to shell and all that stuff. So uh, let's turn it over to Nick first here. What's happening your way? Freaking does one line, one line poorly, and all of a sudden he's a terrible actor. I just fucking, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a little stuck, eh, Nick? <laughs> I, just, I don't even I just don't even know what to say anymore. I just you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do a stream on it. I, I, I think so. I, I just, suggest I, an hour. Yeah. It won't take that long to skewer him for his views on <laughs> do that in about 30 seconds. My name is Nick Suter. I am uh, the host and executive producer of In Time. We do news, politics, and culture. Um, I used to I, I used to love Dave and his work until he came on our show, and now I'm not on speaking terms with him anymore. Um, but it's uh, we've had Starsky on uh, a few times. In fact, we're going to have Starsky on um, on uh, uh, fr every Friday now, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, to uh, to help us out. It's it's news. We do interviews, uh, current events. We've been keeping up a lot with uh, what's going on. Uh, the January 6th Commission. Uh, we do international news and anything anything that affects, you know, the world in general, keeping up with also the flooding in Pakistan, various other things. So hope you guys uh, will check that out. Also, I will say, um, and I, I said this earlier, you know, there's, uh, it, it, there's a lot of people watching this show. And so that tells me that a lot of people like it. And we've been getting a lot of super chats. And that's awesome. Uh, the algorithm, we are all slaves to the algorithm. Best way to help out a channel aside from the super chats, hit the like button, just hit the like button, hit it now. If you're if this is the show's wrapping up, it helps it. It really helps nobody. I know Dick doesn't like talking about it. I don't like talking <laughs> about it. We'd rather be no, doing the no, shows. No, no, no. <laughs> we do it because it actually really does help and it's free. So I hope you guys will do that. Thank you guys very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And Dick is muted, which is, by the way, my oh. my favorite way to watch the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay uh it's still uh the line was still delivered terribly but good show it's well done um let, let's check in with uh how about yourself claire what are you thinking <laughs> i'm thinking it was a very great show i always love being here and getting the update from starsky and appreciate how he brings the human paul to it and his humor i have to say i'm quite impressed like 
I just adore the man. Um, and uh, thanks for having me. And uh, regardless of your taste in movies, I will we will tolerate and come back. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable at all the hate Dave gets. I don't know why. Like, I, I, I realize it. <laughs> I realize he's a bit of a pedant, but he's English. Like, you got to give him a pass, okay? <laughs> okay. No, I love him. I, I, I do like being here. Thank you so much uh, for including me. Thank you, everyone, for the super chats and all, and for tolerating my mispronunciations. I'll get better. Your grace is truly appreciated. <laughs> you know, on that, back to you, Dick. <laughs> all right. Good shouts. Uh, Commander, what do you think? Uh, is the connection working for you? Are you able to unmute and give us a little goodbye moment? Yeah. This show was an excellent show. A lot of good information. Great seeing you again. And, you know, Coca-Cola is dragging its feet on sponsorship, but they should get their act together. And everyone have a great day. And remember, there's a sale on Orc Meat, and it's only going to last maybe another, um, <laughs> hopefully not too long. And then it'll be expensive again. So have a great day. <laughs> oh, no. That was, that was oh. awesome. Oh, and, and let's turn to everybody's least favorite streamer, Fallacy Dave. <laughs> oh, not everybody. Still a fan, Dave. Don't let them include me. Okay. Uh, I'm just being my name. Go for it. That's my slogan. Uh, naturally, everyone's got a fantastic original outro. So I'm going to steal this uh, instead from BT Clan from earlier, who said, uh, Do your countrymen who may not have a global presence access like you do, Starsky? Realize how much love and support is constantly being sent your way. If not, how do we let you know? We absolutely do let them know as much as we can uh, because uh, we send them all kinds of messages from you guys. Uh, we send them your letters. Uh, again, those uh, uh, drawings that were made by uh, New Zealand kids uh, went to my brigade and uh, guys know that uh, they receive a lot of equipment they receive uh, a lot of uh, good wishes uh, they cooperate they uh, actually fight uh, in the same trench shoulder to shoulder with uh, international volunteers uh, who came to defend ukraine as well so this uh, support is uh, of course felt by uh, all ukrainian soldiers um, our artillerists as well uh, that uh, use triple sevens uh, on the front lines uh, so uh, we all feel that we all know that and uh, the most crucial thing is that uh, it, it must be this way uh, because uh, if we are able to leave because of this support and if it stops uh, it's bad yes very much so I uh, I want to give a huge shout out to everybody that shows up and joins us live and watches the show after and a really big shout out to everybody who donates in and super chats and supports the channel in a number of different ways. And OK, I'll suck it up and say it. Please like, share and subscribe. Oh, fuck, that tastes awful coming out of your mouth. I tell you, I, it's the Canadian in me. I can't fucking do it. But uh Slava Ukraini, let's all keep up and do as much as we can. And let's hand it off to Starsky to give us the final thoughts of the day. Thank you so much for supporting my country and my people. Uh, we will never forget that. And uh, you are awesome. Always happy to see familiar names in the chat as usual. Uh, thank you so much. Awesome. With that, I think we can just say Slava Ukraini, and we'll see you soon, fellow babies. Good night, everybody. Good night. Take care. Good night. Nick. I'm Sorry. gonna hit the button. <laughs> hit the button. Mark Hamilton. Oh!
It's over. Go home.